Uh, so we can't confidently predict the effect of diet on heart disease just by looking at the effect on blood lipids. We'd like, we also would like to look directly at how diet is related to heart disease uh, and other outcomes as well, because that integrates the effects operating through all of these different pathways. And there are likely some other pathways. This is not meant to be exclusive. There's recent evidence that there's a substance called TMAO in the blood that's a result of the metabolism of, of uh, certain uh, dietary constituents in the gut. Uh, so there's ongoing research, probably more pathways even than this. But the point is we like to look directly at diet and heart disease. So uh, in principle, in theory, the best way to do it is by doing a large randomized trial by, uh, for example, if we're looking at, uh, say, total fat in the diet and uh, coronary heart disease, we'd randomize many thousands of people into high fat or low fat and follow them for years to see who developed more heart disease. The problem is that uh, we can randomize people to low fat or high fat, but they don't always stay on those diets. People are people that are not animals in a cage where you really can control the diets. And the reality has been that most of those studies have not been very successful. And I'll circle back to that briefly. That the next best kind of study would usually be what we call prospective cohort studies. And this is the kind of study that my colleagues and I have been conducting for the last 40 years. Uh, the first was the nurse's health study that enrolled about 121,000 nurses in 1976, uh, initially to look mostly at oral contraceptives and breast cancer, but I realized this would be a great opportunity to look at diet. So after a series of pilot studies, we first started collecting dietary data in 1980. And uh, several members of the Nurses' Health Study are here, I understand. And I, it's really important to point out this, the participants have been remarkable that after over 40 years, there's still been about 90% participating here, and we, this work would not have been possible without the commitment and dedication of the participants. Uh, so in this kind of study, we collect dietary data by an extensive uh, dietary questionnaire. You can ask anybody who's been in the study. This is quite a bit of work to fill it out, but that, that we've documented with lots of detailed studies. It does provide highly valid data about what people eat. Uh, and we also collect data about smoking, physical activity, you name it, we have it in our computers. And so when we want to look at, say, total fat intake and heart disease, we can adjust statistically for differences in smoking, physical activity, and other variables. And uh, we enrolled about 52,000 men in 1986 and another 116,000 nurses in 1989, specifically to look at earlier life diets and exposures, because there was a lot of evidence that what we eat and what we do early on has a for, has a bigger impact on breast cancer than, than what we do in midlife and later. And at the bottom, I've listed some of my colleagues here who have contributed. This is a very uh, team-oriented, a team-based, uh, multidisciplinary study of experts in many different areas, and there are many more people who have contributed over the years to uh, these studies. <clears throat> so this is what we saw uh, in a recent analysis uh, looking at total mortality that we published just a couple of years ago, and it's, I, I could show almost the same figure for looking at coronary heart disease that we published in 1997. But by this time, when we put these big populations together and started off with only with the healthiest people, that, that it included about 130,000 men and women, now with up to over 30 years of follow-up and many repeated measures of diet, about uh, 30,000 participants had died during that period of time. So, uh, unfortunate, they were, they were getting, they were aging, uh, I mean, the nurses particularly in the early study, uh, but that gives a great statistical power to look in detail at types of fat and other aspects of diet. And so what we're doing here from, we're showing increases in risk of, of uh, death uh, for the same number of calories from different types of fat uh, versus the same number of calories from carbohydrate intake. And that blue line at the top is trans fat, and you're probably familiar with that. That, uh, that is by far the worst type of fat, uh, gram for gram, compared to any other type of fat. And uh, fortunately, based on our earlier data in trans fat and some short-term studies, uh, trans fat is out of the diet now. It's illegal after June of 2018 to produce trans fat. And then the orange line 
uh, is saturated fat. And you can see there is some, it's not a strong positive association, but there is an increased risk of death uh, for saturated fat compared to overall carbohydrate intake. And the yellow line is monounsaturated fat actually related to lower risk of, heart, uh, of total death and coronary heart disease. And then the purple line is polyunsaturated fat in the diet strongly related to lower risk of mortality. So if you look at all fats combined, uh, the good fats and bad fats sort of balance out. Although for total fat, now we actually do see that higher fat intake is related to lower mortality. Uh, and, but, and that's because we've gotten rid of trans fat in recent years. Uh, and the, so the type of fat in the food supply has actually gotten better, quite a bit better, over the last uh, 15 or 20 years. So, uh, but it really total fat is not the uh, important variable. It, the type of fat is what's really by far the most important. And so getting trans fat out of the picture, uh, emphasizing uh, replacing foods high in saturated fat with foods higher in uh, unsaturated fats, particularly uh, polyunsaturated fat, uh, is, a, is a direction to go based on this, this kind of evidence, which fits very perfectly with what we see in short-term controlled feeding studies looking at blood lipids. Uh, there was one successful uh, randomized trial to look at a related question, and this is the PREDIMED study. Uh, and this is a fairly unique study because they did have biomarker data to show that people really did stay on the, the diets uh, to a high degree during the five years that the study went. And the study was stopped at about five years because the results were statistically significant and the monitoring committee viewed it was unethical to go continue on in the study. The, the basic study was uh, three groups. Uh, control group, which was advice to go on low fat, to reduce fat intake, although they only modestly reduced their fat intake. And then uh, Mediterranean diet with added nuts or Mediterranean diet with added extra virgin olive oil. And both of those forms of the Mediterranean diet were beneficial, about a 20 to 25% reduction in risk of uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, both of those uh, statistically significant. Again, fitting very much what we see from the short-term studies looking at uh, changes in blood cholesterol fra fractions. But then, uh, this is why people are confused. Uh, this is uh, uh, Eat Butter, cover of Time magazine, based on a study uh, that was mentioned yesterday, deeply flawed in many ways. Uh, uh, and, but one of the key issues still is uh, the comparison. What are you comparing butter to? If you're comparing it to a high trans fat margarine, that margarine may actually be worse, but you get a, a different picture with different comparisons. So we did a, uh, uh, where we have this uh, very large uh, set of three populations, we did actually look at uh, replacing the, the uh, dairy fat with uh, different sources of calories, uh, different types of fat and different types of carbohydrates. And so the, the vertical line there is, the risk for butter to the left is lower risk with the replacement factor, like on the top line, that's vegetable fat replacing butter, uh, highly significantly lower risk of, uh, of uh, uh, both heart disease uh, and total mortality. We saw very similar results looking at, both, at either, either of those. This is looking at total cardiovascular disease in this figure. And, uh, Replacing the second line there, looking at replacement of butter with other animal fats, like from beef, uh, there actually was some increase in risk of uh, total cardiovascular disease. But basically everything else, the replacement factor was uh, better than uh, uh, dairy fat, basically butter. So that included uh, polyunsaturated fats, both omega-6 and omega-3 uh, polyunsaturated fats, and uh, with uh, whole grains. Uh, calorie for calorie at the next to the bottom line, lower risk. Uh, but replacing butter, calories from butter with calories from refined grains, it was about a wash. There was very a little difference. So uh, again, it, butter, the, the effect of butter depends on what the replacement is. If you're replacing it with beef tallow, um, actually the butter may look a little bit better. But if you're replacing it with refined starches, there's not much difference. But all the healthy oils replacing butter 
uh, lower risk of cardiovascular disease. And I would mention all these analyses we have adjusted for smoking and uh, activity and, and other risk factors. So again, the comparison <coughs> to emphasize is really the issue here. Uh, if, uh, this is if you're looking at saturated fat in the middle, replace it with trans fat up at the top, higher risk of heart disease, replace it with carbohydrates. On average, not much difference, but it depends on the carbohydrate too. If you replace it with a fine, refined starch and sugar, likely to be higher risk of uh, heart disease. But if you replace saturated fat with some whole grains, that will reduce risk. But most importantly, replacing saturated fat with unsaturated plant oils uh, is related to lower risk. And that includes uh, olive oil, which has been most studied, but almost surely canola oil, which has been studied as well, and other types of non-hydrogenated plant oils. So just to summarize on fat and coronary heart disease, uh, coronary heart disease rates can be dramatically reduced by uh, nutritional means, but this will not be achieved by replacing saturated fat, fat with carbohydrates in general. And we should abandon recommendations regarding percentage of energy from fat and avoid pejorative references to fat or fatty foods. That fat per se is not bad. And advice about dietary fat should focus on replacing saturated fat and uh, getting trans fat out of the diet. Uh, but replacing saturated fats uh, with vegetable oils, including sources of omega-3 fatty acids. I didn't have time to talk about those. But also omega-6s. They're both good. And most of what I showed you was omega-6 fatty acids. And, and red meat should be replaced with nuts, a combination of nuts, fish, poultry, and legumes. And there's a lot of flexibility about that I'll come back to.